It's been over 50 years since Watson and Crick's great discovery of DNA's double helix structure. Since then, scientists have probed and revealed many of the genome secrets, but not without some surprises. In 1997, scientists Andrew Fire and Craig Mello were conducting a series of experiments to better understand the function of specific genes. They injected synthetic RNA made up of two strands into the cell of a roundworm, then watched. What happened next was astonishing. A mechanism within the worm cell destroyed the double-stranded RNA, as well as some of its own messenger RNA. In effect, the gene responsible for coding the production of proteins in the cell was turned off. Fire and Mello had discovered what came to be known as RNA interference. Today, Andrew Fire is a geneticist at Stanford University. We sort of came upon this in experiments where we were injecting RNA and hoping that things would happen that were very specific things. And as injecting it turned injecting with a little with a little glass needle, right, into, wow. the, into a worm in our case, although similar experiments were done in a bunch of other systems. And if you see a situation where the RNA goes in there and not only is it shut off, which is not too surprising, you don't know what happened then, but it's also shutting off one of the cell's own genes, then you have a surprising situation. That was really the surprise that came up in the early 90s. The discovery of RNA interference was a milestone it gave scientists a potentially powerful new technology. What is uh, RNA interference going to mean for the future? What are their applications for this? The first one is really understanding this new biological mechanism. Whatever makes genes silence. Whatever makes genes silence turn on or off. The second uh, is being able to do these general screens of what genes do, being able to look at gene function, just using this mechanism as a tool. And the third thing is sort of, I would say, a holy grail in the field, is can we use RNAi as a therapeutic? Can to we cure disease. Can RNA interference as a therapeutic. Can we cure disease with it? And the model there, the idea is you take a disease where the people are sick because there's a gene there that's out of control. This is a genetic disease. A genetic disease, which includes viruses, it includes tumors, and includes certainly gen certain genetic diseases as well. And the question is, can we shut that gene off this holy grail of therapeutic use in humans is still just out of reach. But Fire's discovery of RNA interference opens the door to a new generation of life-saving breakthroughs. The mystery of what makes us human was partially solved with the cracking of the genetic code. But the rest of the answer lay in our next great discovery the sequencing of our complete genetic blueprint, called the genome. The effort has been called the largest scientific collaboration in history. But it began as a race between two teams vying to be the first to sequence the human genome. By 1990, the teams had joined forces. Craig Venter was one of the team leaders. How did you get started on this thing? What made you want to sequence the human genome? Well, I started my career looking uh, for one gene, a uh, gene for the adrenaline receptor in the brain and the heart, and it took 10 years to get one. <laughs> and the choice was uh, trying to look at the entire human genome, which we had essentially no knowledge of, only a few hundred genes at the time. Uh, and there was speculation, maybe there were 300,000 genes. So here's the most important information to our own humanity, and we knew essentially nothing about it. By June 2000, the two teams were ready to make history. Today marks a historic point in the 100,000-year record of humanity. We are announcing today for the first time our species can read the chemical letters of its genetic code. So what did you find? Well, first, the, the most simple thing we found is that we had only a tiny fraction of the genes that some people were predicting. Instead of 300,000, we found 26,000. So, and then we found that uh, the variation between any two humans is remarkably uh, low. We're almost virtually identical to each other. 
And then by sequencing the genomes of other mammals, uh, we sequenced uh, my standard poodle uh, shadow. Uh, so we have the dog genome, the mouse genome, the rat genome. We're now doing uh, the rhesus monkey genome here. We find that all mammals share most of the genes in the same order, the same sets of genes, and they just move around from one chromosome to another. So where is all this sequencing taking us? Well, what I've argued from the beginning is this lays a whole new foundation for science. Uh, people were expecting miracle cures. I think there was a lot of overhype on things. But what took me a decade to do with the adrenaline receptor. Just when you first started out. That's right. Now, any scientist, any student in the world that has access to the internet can make that same decade-long discovery in five seconds or a few seconds. <laughs> And most human genes, we don't know yet even any functions about them. So we're starting at a new foundation of having this information. They have the structures, they actually have the genes. They can study their function. And it's changing our view already of evolution, our similarity with other mammalian genomes, uh, even with plant and bacterial genomes. It's impacting medicine already with new diagnostics. Understanding the complexity of genes associated with human traits and disease. And that's going to be a huge challenge for the future so how did you feel when your group sequenced it, went finished, did it, pulled it off? When we finished it and finished writing the paper, describing it for the first time, it was probably one of the most fulfilling moments I've ever had in my life. And, and it was just, it was a fantastic period of satisfaction with what our team did uh, in trying to contribute to the history of humanity. It's hard to believe, but from Gregor Mendel's discovery of the laws of heredity to the complete sequencing of the human genome has been a mere 150 years. But thanks to some of the greatest discoveries in the history of science, it's been time enough for us to understand some of life's deepest secrets and to understand the genetic ties that bind all living organisms. That includes you, brother. Thanks, Bill. Oh, no, 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 it is I who must thank you for taking the time to come down here and do a